Hello, good morning. Myself Balram sir. Today I am here back again with the question true false and not given in reading module. And I hope you will all like it, this uh, video because I will provide you all the necessary tips and tricks with all the examples. At the end of this video, I will put some questions there which you can watch and feel uh, easy to practice yourself. Have a look. This question is one of the most common type of question that can be occurred in any of the reading passages. There are three passages, passages 1, 2 and 3. Any passage can be this question. Unlike as no and not given, this question true false and not given is mainly based on the factual information that means scientific fact. And as no not given, I taught you in my previous video that based on the person's opinion or writer's opinion, it will appear in an order in the passage. You have to understand different vocabularies and synonyms to understand the statement whether it is true, false or not given. Students, one thing I have to make sure for you, if you are writing just a T for you there, and we have one habit, we erase this part and put here false. What is this? In this situation, you will not get the score because the computer, the scanner machine will not judge it whether it is true or false. So what I recommend you, write the full form with full spelling and make some gaps also between the letters. To learn in detail, you have to understand the following situations about true, false and not given. True if the statement matches with the information given in the passage. If the statement in the question matches or agrees with the statement with the information in the passage, you write true. Now for the next is false. If the statement contradicts contra dicts or disagrees with the information given in the passage so contradicts means opposes if the meaning comes opposite with the statement and in the passage if the passage and question is opposed each other, meaning is opposite, you can use false. And the last is called not given. We use not given if the statement is incomplete. or the information is not mentioned in the passage. In this situation you can put not given. Most of the time students may get problem in false and not given because it looks similar somehow. And to make sure yourself, you have to read the statement and whether it is false or not given, that can be given there with one, two words can be distract, can modify the meaning. So in that situation, you have to understand each and everything, okay? Now some useful tips I wanna give you here. Read the instructions more carefully. What happens students sometimes if you the question has given true false not given and if you write in your answer sheet as no not given you will not get a score. So what the instruction has shown in the question you have to follow that. Every question has different instructions 
can be given. Next thing, read the statement properly. Next thing, underline the keywords especially in spelling uh, in noun adjective adverb verb think about the correct answer go back to the passage and make sure about the information all the questions occur in an order attempt all the questions if you are not sure about the answer put not given in the answer sheet so my dear students you have to understand these things these are the tips which is very important to secure high band score in true false and not given type of question read the instructions very important read the statement means the question properly underline the keywords like especially for nouns adjective adverb and verb think about the correct answer go back to the passage and make sure about the information all the questions occur in an order attempt all the questions you have to read the grammatically the sentence is uh, given in the passage or not if you are not sure about the answer put not given in the answer sheet can you rub it i want to rub this okay okay thank you you have to be careful with the distractors be aware with these distractors it's not for you Welcome back. Now we are going to talk about the score table of academic IELTS and for GT or UKBI IELTS. Now you have to go first academic students, those who are preparing for their further education in abroad, they should learn this box, this table. And those who are applying for the working permit or working visa for GT or for UKBI, they have to watch this table. Now go from this academic box first. If you check here, the students 39 to 40, you will get 9 band score. 
if you get 37 to 38 you get 8.5 if you secure 35 to 36 8 33 to 34 7.5 30 to 32 7 27 to 29 6.5 23 to 26 6 19 to 22 number of questions if you make correct you get 5.5 .5. uh, 15 to 18 5 don't look at below this because this is invaluable not valuable so what is you should focus you have to focus on this above 19 to 22 score that means 5.5 those who are applying for Canada they should get here 23 above right they should not was for below 23 so it should focus to get higher score to apply for for the education and if you are applying for UKBI or GT general general training then you should focus on this score table 40 for 9 39 for 8.5 37 to 38 8 36 for 7.5 34 to 35 for 7 32 to 33 score for 6.5 30 to 39 31 is for 6 27 to 29 is 5.5 23 to 26 is 5 19 to 22 is 4.5 so i want to break here you have to go straight with this if you secure 19 that means you are eligible for UKBI or GT right uh, for general training the students should get number for this above 23 and for UKBI they should get 29 to 22 that means 4.5 and for general training they have to secure 23 above that means 5 that is important because if they will not secure this they are unable to proceed for their UK or general training uh, you know they are like for Canada for other countries so what do you think in mind <laughs> for academic student they should secure 19 above for applying for Australia is minimum score in one uh, module but if you are applying for advanced country like Canada you should secure 23 plus score that means 6 and for UKBI or general training they have to focus a uh, first UKBI they have to take 19 above that means 4.5 and for general training they have to secure 23 above that means 5 that is very compulsory uh, very important for those aspirants who are studying IELTS